Just over a year ago, I made a video discussing if walking burns more fat than running. I broke down the science and I gave my opinion on which is best for those trying to lose weight. The video was well received, but since I published this, I've seen a few people bring up different variables that I didn't discuss in my video and I felt like this needed to be discussed. We're gonna run through a quick explainer so we're all on the same page so we can understand the science behind this and I'm gonna discuss those variables that I mentioned before. If you guys are interested in weekly fitness content, this is Science Based Fitness where I discuss fitness content and the science behind it so you guys have better understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. So let's jump right into this. Okay, so when we are alive and breathing, we are using energy, regardless of if we're sitting on a couch or if we're running at full speed. So why would working less be burning more fat? So this is where we're at when we're discussing if walking burns more fat than running. So let's better explain this by stepping into a lab. When we're in a lab, we can collect data on exhaled air. Using the respiratory exchange ratio, we can calculate how much fat and how much carbohydrates are being used as fuel. When walking at a lower intensity level, we have a greater amount of fat that's being used as fuel versus carbohydrates. When running or sprinting or working at a higher level, we're using more carbohydrates. Now wait, don't just click away from this video thinking you've got the full scoop now. There's definitely more to understand here and it's not just for people trying to lose weight but also for people trying to build muscle. If your main goal is to lose weight, the point is that you wanna burn the stored energy that you already have which is being stored as fat. And I've discussed this before in other videos. If your goal is to lose weight, you must remain in a calorie deficit. So that means that the total amount of energy coming in must be lower than what you use in a day, and that is the main driver behind weight loss. But there are a few additional factors, and that's what I wanted to discuss here today. Now, this comes down to what's called cortisol, and the science seems pretty clear on this. When people have increased levels of cortisol, they struggle with losing weight. Now, increased levels of cortisol could be from different variables. It could be from one, maybe stress at work, stress in life. It can also be an increase in physical stress that is too much for your body to handle. We can increase cortisol levels from being too tired and not getting enough sleep and whatever just seems to stress you out. But we can't always look at stress as a negative thing. Stresses are what help us improve and grow. Stresses to our bone, for example, through something like Wolf's Law, allow us to stress a bone so we can grow, same thing for our muscle. So a lot of people will say, if you're someone trying to lose weight, you should walk so you don't increase cortisol levels. And this can actually be good advice. But this is where we come to a crossroads. Now let's say that there are two people that are both gonna do 20 minutes of cardio. Person A on the left here is gonna do 20 minutes walking at three miles per hour. And person B on the right here is going to do a slow jog at four and a half miles per hour for 20 minutes. Which person is gonna burn more calories? For a lot of people, a four and a half mile an hour slow jog is not too much stress for your body to handle and shouldn't affect your cortisol levels much at all. And even though we can understand that the majority of the fuel source being burned for individual A is fats, individual B has still used a greater amount of energy. Now the second point here is for individuals trying to build muscle. So let's say you're someone that's trying to put on some muscle and still stay toned and lean. You like to mix in cardio, so let's say after your 45 minute weight training session, you decide to hit 20 minutes of cardio. So which option would be better, a walk or a run? In this situation, walking would be more beneficial since it's shown if too much cardio is done post weight training, there can be a reduction in muscle mass gained. I made a full video on this, I'll link it at the end of this one. But for optimal muscle gains, your best bet is to separate your cardio and your weight training sessions for early in the morning and later in the day. Or if you're gonna do them at the same time, prioritize whatever's more important to you first. So you'll have better success growing your muscle if you're hitting weight training first. I do wanna reiterate that those who are trying to lose weight don't have to follow the exact same plan as someone else. If walking is proving to be successful for you, you can keep doing this. But if it's starting to slow down and you need a way to challenge yourself again, increasing your cardio speed isn't going to be detrimental as long as you're listening to your body and not overstressing yourself out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found this content helpful and useful, 
click that like button, share it with a friend, and hit subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.